Hi guys, Sai here, and welcome back to Cube Hamster's awesome redstone server for what should hopefully be the second video on this go board that you are watching. If you have not seen the previous video, please do go and watch that first. I will put a link up the top now for you, and also a link in the doobly doo. And that video is showcasing it, it's showing the controls, everything like that. No demonstration in this video, this is purely a te technical explanation of what is going on. I don't expect most people to be wanting to watch this stuff, and that's why it's separate. So, without further ado, we're just going to nip over here, and the first thing we're going to do is say thank you to all of these people, Thorin fans, Piggly Pops, iDark Legion, Jonah Webb, someone that I can't remember their name, if I can find their name, I will put it in the doobly-doo as well. Mulvey97, Cube Hamster for the awesome server, and Moyang for, well, it's fairly obvious really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, just wanted to get that out there in the videos. So, if we come over here, this is a single cell of the Go board, or a single cell of the logic for the Go board. It is 9x9, nine nine. I don't think you can compress it anymore horizontally. Um, Possibly in one direction by one, maybe, I don't know. But uh, Tileable is quite difficult to compress at this point because of the vertical transmissions that you need. So if I get my cursor out so we can point at stuff, that's always handy. And we're going to start from the bottom up, roughly. So here we have dark lines of spruce wood and light lines of birch wood and as you can probably guess from where these are coming these are the cursor controls for black and white the obvious way around <laughs> spruce is not for white so if this is horizontal lines and um, not really vertical other horizontal lines <laughs> uh, and if we fire this line, the piston goes off. This is the same for the one beneath it. If we fire the line running this way, the piston extends. And if we have the other line on at the same time, our pistons here switch around. We basically have an AND gate working like a, a matrix or a map. A map, that's the technical term for it in computing, I believe, isn't it? Where you have two points um, associated with each other. And here we've got a bunch of AND gates, kind of. Um, we have signal transmission up when these are open, and signal transmission down when it's closed, and the states are mirrored, of course. Right, so, working f this way across, the teal line here, or cyan, is, well, it's not really cyan, it's definitely teal, isn't it? Cyan! No, it's cyan! Okay, the cyan line of wool is the state of the tile at its current position, so it's an ore. It's black or white, so if either of them are on, the teal line teal cyan line transmits down and out here and this is just an indicator and it also stops you from placing stones if there's already a stone there um, just at the controls to make things a bit faster. The pink line which is coming from both controls is reset and this will kill a group of stones which is connected to the stone in the current space but more on that later. The purple line, or magenta, is, if we come over here, place a white stone, which at the moment will let it all up there, and the red line is place a black stone. Over here we have actual purple, and this is the master reset, and this just runs through all of the tiles, and it comes up and it bypasses these AND gates and goes straight into the vertical transmission for the pink wire. Uh, it does some other stuff in the entirety of the thing, but that's all it does inside one of the cells. So, if we head a little bit further up here, the next things we come across are the light and dark green wires. These are for scoring white and black, respectively. And this is a pretty neat thing, but 
I think I'll show you that later, when we actually get round to it. So, if we follow the red wire up here, which is black placement, first thing we get to is here. And I think we should be able to see this from the other side possibly a bit better. So, we have both of the per magenta and red lines come to the bottom half of an RS0 latch here, essentially. The, this is just a normal piston, pushes the blocks up, and when it's up, this transmits through. It transmits into these two side pistons, which extends them and stops you from placing any more um, stones, possibly, just in case you're mashing the buttons too fast. That's reasonably quick and you can only place one. And it also goes through repeaters here and goes down for the notification for the players that you can't place any more stones. Uh, if we head a little bit further up this red wire, we can see where it goes eventually. It terminates here at another reset set, set reset latch. Uh, there is no glass block in the middle of this sort of like loop here. So if we artificially place a black stone in this space, You can now see that the black wire is on, which is a very sensible colour for black presence. The white wire mirrors this for white, and the dark grey and light grey will serve the same functions, but for opposite um, opposite colours. Sorry, uh, well, they're not technically colours, but whatever. I'll go through the dark grey and light grey now, because these are the group mechanisms, and these are pretty clever, I think. So, basically, we have a bunch of two-way repeaters here. These are half of the two-way repeaters. If we build them out, they look like this, with the central repeaters on two ticks. And these are awesome and they make use of repeater locks. The only thing is you shouldn't ever power both sides within two ticks of each other because if you do that, they'll lock on and yeah, you have to go through that entire thing and debug it and it's not pleasant, believe me. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Sorry, my throat's getting a bit sore now. Um, so if we were to reset we would be sending a signal up this pink wire and this sends a signal in here into this dark grey circuit. So, if there is a black stone here, uh, well, that bottom piston will activate in any case because we have a lamp under here causing a block update and that'll extend that piston upwards. Uh, it's important that it's a lamp not like a trapdoor because that gives you a bit more time for other stuff to happen. Um, so yeah, that extends upwards, it removes the black stone from this place, and it sends a signal out every side, because having a black stone here extends these and allows signal transmission into and out of the two-way repeaters. Now if we have another black stone placed adjacent to it, it'll also have these two-way repeaters open. So the signal that's resetting this stone will travel across this two-way repeater into the next stone and reset that also, and it'll continue propagating outwards throughout an entire group of black stones. The same with the white stones up there. And this kills off entire groups with one press of the button, which is one of the awesome features of this Go board. <laughs> if I say so myself. Uh, the other thing that happens, over here we have a mono stable, which is attached to an inverted black. So, when black turns from on to off, this gives a one tick pulse, which sends this down and that is basically a very short downwards vertical transmission that gives another pulse through here. Uh, this sticky piston pushes it straight back up again. It doesn't seem so relevant on this side, a lot more relevant around this side where it's exactly the same thing but extended a lot. It also sends a pulse into the top of this RS null latch here which is the one telling us whether there is any uh, stone in this position. So we've taken the stone out of this position so of course we've got to tell it that we've taken the stone out. And the other signal gets sent down here. 
back to the scoring circuits now. So we will just for debugging purposes kill that stone. Uh, where's a simple place to put it in? This is probably the easiest place. As you heard, a lot of pistons went off. Uh, both of the white and black kill circuits activate, but the white kill circuit in this case was closed, so it won't affect any adjacent white groups, and also it can't reset an already reset latch. As you see, the black has died, these are now closed, and also, if we come down here to the white scoring system, this SR latch has been, I don't know, set, probably, and if we send a one tick pulse down here, or indeed any longer pulse, we get a pulse back. If we do this when a blackstone hasn't been killed, though, we don't get nothing. So if we would send a one tick pulse down here, it would transmit across this gap when there is a, when the gold block is over at this side and then come back it takes three ticks to do that and it takes an extra three ticks for each module stacked along which means that you get pulses at three tick intervals if you have adjacent captured stones which is the perfect timing for a very fast piston loop for scoring just a moment while I get some water please Okay, uh, also as you've noticed, on its way back it resets these latches, so it only scores you once. <sighs> Next thing up, so you've seen the dark blue circuit, the light blue circuit serves exactly the same purpose for the white as the dark blue does for the black. Now we head up, the next thing we get to is another set of these green wires which score in exactly the same fashion, light green scoring for white and dark green scoring for black. These also need a one tick pulse to score. At the moment, no one's scoring because both of these pistons are down. Here, uh, it's kind of different from the one beneath. Uh, so if one of these pistons is retracted, you will score when you send a piston pulse down here, it'll transmit up to the top. Uh, obviously I'm using half slabs here to ensure one-way transmission and it'll go back and you'll get a pulse. So the way that we can get one of these to retract is if we come up here and I'm sure I've put inputs around one side here. Yes, I have inputs here. So. Black is now te contesting this territory by sending a signal into this two-way repeater. This is what this set of two-way repeaters is. The group control here is actually territory control rather than group control, but oh well. Now, over here we have an enabling switch for... oh, it's over here. An enabling switch for the territory count, and I've added this because while it technically shouldn't be necessary, whenever I tried without the enabling switch, my uh, two-way repeaters kept getting locked on, which shouldn't have happened, but I think it might have been to do with the hashtag limit with such a large redstone server. Uh, though it's surprisingly inactive at the moment, which is quite nice for recording that there's no thing. So, if we enable territory counting... I've put that at the wrong end, haven't I? Yep. That was slightly silly of me. Let's enable territory counting properly. Uh, these two tick repeaters mean that every... Hmm, signals always arrive at nodes at the same time rather than at two-way repeaters at the same time. And it's kind of a hard concept to explain. I've not really got the words for it. But basically... Uh, because inside there, always each adjacent node is either getting um, enabled two ticks before or after all of its other adjacent nodes. So you can't have two sides of one of these uh, two nodes on, well, a node on either side of a two-way repeater turning on at the same time. 
it's uh, you you either get it or you don't. Basically, uh, it's an evens and odds thing. But yeah, now that we've enabled it, we can see that the black signal, the black contesting here that we've got, is passing through and out all of the sides of this because it's an empty space. If we had a black stone in here. Um, as you can see here, the black is transferring, sorry, uh, if I just turn this off, the black would transfer up into each side of the matrix, so it would transfer its signal out in every direction, but it wouldn't have a signal in the center here, which is the important place. So at the moment, if we just re-enable this, and come down here, we can see that this is being counted as black's territory because this is enabled. If we also have a contest from white, i.e. it's connected via empty spaces to a white stone in some direction, any direction, it doesn't have to be right adjacent to it, it can be like three stones, three spaces away. Now, neither player scores because both are contesting. And if we turn black off, white scores, if we count. Okay, let's unenable all this stuff. And yeah, uh, just a quick explanation here. The, uh, oh, the, yeah, the teal, mate, the teal here is actually, cyan, sorry, uh, is actually mirroring its state below. If it's, if the circuit's enabled, the cyan here is neither black or white, um, or black nor white, I think it is, yeah, black nor white, rather than black or white. Uh, anyway, what was I going to say next? What was I going to say next? Yes, that was it. Colour coding. Diamond inputs, uh, lamps outputs, obviously, where we've got lapis blocks here and there's also a couple further down these are technically outside of the 9x9 space for this module but when you tile it up this uh, this block here is what's mirroring the lapis block over there and we've got two pink blocks here that appear to serve no purpose until we see the lapis blocks over here and it's actually the transmission up here so when you're tiling it out you do have to remember to add these in in the last ish instance and possibly take these ones out. Uh, though I will be providing a world download for the uh, entire thing in the doobly-doo because I don't expect everyone to put it together. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much that. Uh, outside of it, there's just like turn sequence stuff. There's just a bunch of RS NOR latches um, and pull shorteners and extenders. We've got a lock here that um, creates an infinite power supply if you end your turn without placing a stone. All sorts of little things like that to enforce the rules. Nothing else major there. So if we go down to the bottom here we have the light green r wire on this side running across and this runs into all of the input wires for the white death count or black death counts which scores white and then I come up here so um, yeah come fly with me come fly let's fly up here and yeah so these run up here into the bottom row inputs of these, which are the score counters, as you'll probably know already. Uh, unfortunately, they're in base 6, which I didn't realise at the start, and it's really stupid, and I'm sorry for it. It does fit nicer with the board than base 5 would have, because of the even number required kind of thing. But, yeah, it was stupid of me. I might fix it, but I doubt it. Uh, yeah, so this is based off Thorin Farns, or Thorin Gaming's red counter design. 
The bottom row is controlled by the inputs, which are the outputs of both scoring systems. And the top row is controlled by the last bit of the bottom row. This gives us a total of 36 points possible per row, which you're not going to go over. And then we have at the top here a reset circuit for the board reset. And if we start that, it's a toggle clock. Okay, um, as you see the clock stopped. The clock stopped because the last bit came around and the signal transferred out here into this T flip flop. Uh, because these are all one tick pulses going into this. It will break if you put more than 35 points into a single row, but I honestly can't see how you'll manage that in an actual game of Go. It just seems impossible, unless you're super coing all over the place. <laughs> it's one of the things I've not enforced in this game, super co, or co in any form. I've not enforced it because that would require you to save the state of the board and all back states if you were working with the super co rule and that's just a nightmare it's already big enough as it is so no that's not going to ever be enforced in any update um automatic death detection is also something that's not included in this and there's a very good reason for that the reason being that every time you placed a stone the board would have to check whether you've killed any stones and it would have to go through every group and say you had a really really obscure and stupid group that was a spiral around and it came in and in and in uh, into here and it had one airspace here and one airspace out at the side and you'd placed it as a spiral so you'd placed it starting here and you'd gone along and gone along and they'd just surrounded it so that you only had these two airspaces now the life for that group would extend out all over here if we were doing the life architecture an automatic death and it would extend all the way out here so when you placed a stone here all of these two-way repeaters in the entire spiral would have to turn off, which takes two ticks each, and then they'd have to all turn back on again, starting from the centre outwards to the edge. This group would still be alive, because it still has an airspace. I mean, not for long, not until the end of the game, of course, but all of those would have to turn back on, and that means you're spending a little over four ticks per connection possible in a group, each time you place a stone and that works out somewhere around 80 seconds I believe every time you place a stone and that's just that's ridiculous uh, it, there's no way I was going to do that uh, oh no maybe it was less than that but even so something like 20 seconds it's still ridiculous uh, this is another thing the reason why I've not scored all the things the same because you can only input once every three ticks at fastest to a piston loop. If I scored them all the same, it would take 24.3 seconds for all the scoring to be done, plus any bussing time, and that would be a bit of a nightmare every time you took a stone waiting for 24 seconds. So they're all separated by row, which makes it much, much faster. It square roots the time. Uh, other than that, I, I don't think there's much else to say. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the technical explanation. Oh, I suppose I'll show you the bottom of the screen. Oh, sorry. Oh, actually, I've got to show you the shift registers as well. Uh, so the bottom of the screen here is really simple. There's two inputs which are just bussed up to the outputs of each cell. The screen is on 7x7 seven seven rather than 9x9 nine nine so that you can fit cursors and stuff in and it, it's much smaller this way. And if we activate this input, 
and you can see we just transmit up here to all the ones around the outside. Uh, whereas if we um, activate this input, we transmit not only to the sides but also into this little bit which activates the center and that makes a white stone instead of a black stone. And for the last part, these shift registers, uh, yeah, as you can see this is very close to the edge of my plot, even more so in that direction. I think I actually got to the last block that way. Uh, shift register is over here, let's teleport over there. Really simple derpy shift register, it's not technically a shift register but a counter. And yeah, it's a set of pairs of T flip flops that when you send a signal say through the top of them it activates that pair of T flip flops and the next highest pair or, or the higher pair of T flip flops than that and if you send a signal through the bottom it activates that pair of flip flops through this here um, fence gate underneath and also the previous pair so yeah it just transfers a signal up and down and I've removed controls from the bottom and top rather than barreling it because barreling it can work but you just need a bunch of two-way repeaters in it and I didn't really have space for it on one side so I didn't want to have it only on one side not working. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching through this incredibly long rambly thing that I suppose is kind of an episode. Um, yeah, I hope you've learned something. More importantly though, if you find any bugs, please do tell me. Tell me in the comments of this video, not not the comments of the other video really please, because this isn't quite finished. It's kind of finished, but debugging something like this is an absolute nightmare, like if I've destroyed one redstone accidentally somewhere inside this, I can't know, there's no real way of me checking. So if you find any bugs, please post them in the descriptions of this video or on the um, Planet Minecraft page, or the project, I think you can, yeah, you can post comments on those or on one of the Reddit uh, posts for this because I'm going to cross post it between two. Um, yeah, so I can fix it and get a working world download up for everyone. Uh, like so version 1.2 and stuff I will work on those I'm a bit burnt out at the moment though so this is going to be my last big project until after Christmas I'll still do a few little things and I'll do like let's play but um, uh, I'm not planning to do anything on this scale again until a month or so down the line because I didn't have world edit at the start anyway sorry enough for my rambling I'm sorry thank you for watching have a nice day goodbye <laughs> Thank you.